When you apply your favorite cosmetics, do you ever stop to wonder how they were made? You'll be surprised to learn just how many ingredients go into blush, eyeshadow, and highlighter. And if you're a unicorn fan, make sure you keep watching, as we'll be sharing the lowdown on how to make your very own rainbow highlighter. If this is your first time visiting our channel, don't forget to subscribe and please give this video a big thumbs up. Today we're sharing how blush, eyeshadow, and highlighter are made. Blush – The Ingredients whether you call it blush, blusher, or rouge, this type of makeup is designed to bring color to your cheeks. And that color comes from pigments. These dyes and colorants have to be approved by the FDA, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, before they can be used in commercial makeup in the USA. There are fewer than 100 that are approved. However, thanks to the clever blending of the dyes, cosmetics companies can make thousands of different shades of blush. Chemists will usually use three or four pigments blended together to make one shade. You can see exactly which pigments went into your blush blush by looking at the label. They'll be listed there with a the color name and number. After a year or so, the red pigment starts to break down, so that's when you'll want to buy a new one. The manufacturers also have to add fillers to the colorants, because if you put the pigment on its own onto your skin, it would be crazily vivid. Talc and stearic acid are some of the fillers that are used to dilute the strong color. There are other ingredients that go into blush too, and they are there to provide coverage and to conceal the wearer's natural skin tone. These include substances like titanium oxide, zinc oxide, and mica. It's incredible to think so many ingredients go into one small compact of color. Different Types of Blush All of the different types of blush are colored with pigments and padded out with fillers, but the rest of their ingredients differ. You can buy blush in various forms, including pressed powder, mineral baked, cream, liquid, and gel. Pressed powder blush is exactly that, made from milled powder that has been pressed firm so it's easy to blend and build. This is the most common type and you'll see lots of these compacts on the shelves. Blush that contains oil or water like gel, liquid, and cream blush can be longer lasting because the liquid ingredients help it to form a film over the skin. They dry quickly though, so it can be harder to blend and build color. You can think of a mineral baked blush as sitting between powder-based products and oil-based products. They are made from a liquid that is baked until it becomes solid, so they typically have more pigment and less talc than pressed powders. But you can build the layers like a pressed powder blush. Mineral baked blush goes on quite opaque, so you might want to apply a few coats. You can make it creamier by spraying it with water. It will then turn to solid once it dries. They usually have a more shimmery, luminous appearance compared to pressed powders and have a dome shape rather than being flat. DIY Blush if you've been inspired by seeing Kylie Jenner in a hairnet getting involved at the factories where her cosmetics are made, why not have a go yourself? The easiest is pressed powder blush, as all you need is three tablespoons of water, some baby powder, and food coloring. Pour the water into a small bowl and stir in up to six drops of red food coloring, depending on how dark you want it. Add yellow food coloring to get an orange tint or blue for a purple tint. Then make a paste by adding baby powder one tablespoon at a time. You can also use cornstarch and arrowroot powder if you prefer not to use baby powder. Smooth it out in a container and press it down with a round heavy object over paper towels. Then, leave it to dry with the lid off in a sunny spot for around 24 hours. Do you think you'll give it a go? How Ancient Civilizations Made Makeup Wearing cosmetics is no new thing, as both men and women wore makeup thousands of years ago. To make it, they utilized the natural ingredients they had at hand. Blush has been used since ancient Egyptian times, so that means it can be made in a pretty primitive ways. After all, when you think back to 3000 BC, there weren't any fancy manufacturing plants creating cosmetic lines. They made their rouge out of red fruits and vegetables, which they mixed into a thick paste. Ancient Greeks crushed berries and seeds to make theirs, so it makes sense that we can make our own homemade blush with just a few simple ingredients. Eyeshadow has been used since ancient times to draw attention to the eyes. In ancient Greece, it was known as fucus and it was made from gemstones. These days, the ingredients aren't quite so expensive, but there are lots of them. It's time now to find out more about them. Eyeshadow The Ingredients as with blush, a pigment is used in eyeshadow for color, and many different hues can be blended to make unique shades. Also like blush, eyeshadow includes filler. This is often cosmetic-grade talc or mica, which is a fine mineral powder. Other base filler options include kaolin clay. Binders are used to make sure powder eyeshadow stays on your skin. They are commonly made from forms of magnesium or zinc. As well as staying power, cosmetics companies also want to ensure the powder can easily slide over your lid. To get this slip effect, they add 
Nitride, Boron Nitride, Bismuth Oxychloride, Dimethicone, Silica, or Nylon. Then, a form of vitamin E called tocopherol, or a type of alcohol called glycol, is added to help prevent the growth of bacteria. Who knew so many ingredients went into such a small pan of makeup? And with such complicated names, too. When it comes to the order of the process, first off, the pigments are measured out exactly and then blended using a machine. Then they're added to a base and mixed thoroughly with another machine. Another gadget is used at the end to press the powder mix into the pan. This is where different cosmetics companies add their own logo or pattern to the top layer. Types of eyeshadow all of those ingredients are used just for a powder eyeshadow. There are different types of eyeshadow, including cream and liquid varieties too, and these have additional ingredients in the base. You might be wondering what the difference is between a powder shadow and a cream shadow. Well, let us shed some light on that. With cream eyeshadows, the base has oils and waxes added to it to liquefy a standard powder shadow. There are various options for this, including castor oil, beeswax, jojoba oil, silicone, and shea butter. These wet ingredients are mixed with the powder and left to dry. Dry. The dried wax and oil help the ingredients bond to the skin, so that's why cream shadows tend to be longer lasting. There are also different finishes across all kinds of eyeshadows such as matte and shimmer. Sparkly shadows are very much on trend, but they don't tend to hold together as well as matte shadows. DIY Eyeshadow when Kylie Jenner went behind the scenes of the factory where her cosmetics are made, she shared the processes with the rest of the world via social media. In her video, Kylie dragged the loose eyeshadow powder across the circular molds, and then a machine came down to compress all of the powder tightly together. For those of you keen to make your own DIY eyeshadow at home, instead of a special machine, you can press your powder with a flat, heavy, round object, which you place over a kitchen towel. The first step is to blend together different hues of cosmetic-grade mica powder to create your own custom custom color. Left like this, you can use it as a loose powder eyeshadow. To make a pressed powder eyeshadow, you need to add a powder binder, which you can buy online in liquid or spray form. Add it bit by bit until you get a wet, sandy consistency. Put it in an empty lip balm container and press down using a coin over a paper towel. Leave to dry with the lid off for around 24 hours. Finally, to make a cream eyeshadow, microwave one teaspoon of refined shea butter with eight white beeswax pastilles for one to two minutes until melted. Then add 24 drops of refined jojoba oil, 120 drops of vegetable glycerin, and 12 drops of vitamin E oil to the melted mixture. Finally, mix in two and a quarter teaspoons of mica powder to the bowl. This time, you can put the lid on while it dries for 24 hours. Can you see yourself going to all that trouble to make a cream eyeshadow? It's going to be worth it. Highlighter, the ingredients. Highlighters do exactly that, highlight certain parts of your face. You put it where the light would naturally bounce off of your face, including your cheekbones, brow bone, the inner corners of your eyes, the bridge of your nose, and your cupid's bow. It's a key part of any contouring routine. Highlighter like blush and eyeshadow come in powder and liquid forms, and it has certain standard ingredients no matter which one you buy. There are pigments to provide color and fillers like talc to tone down the bold colors and pat out the product. Some companies don't use talc in their products and use alternatives instead. Instead, shimmery highlighters have light reflecting particles to give it that iridescent glow. All of these parts of the final product are typically put together by trained staff at cosmetics factories. The pigments and other ingredients are weighed out exactly to get the identical shade in every spot. Machines then mix and blend the ingredients and finally they are pressed into their containers. In certain cosmetics factories like ColourPop and Crayolan, a lot of the work is done by hand with only some machinery involved. Rainbow Highlighter the internet lost its mind in 2016 when a rainbow highlighter went viral. Etsy shop Bitter Lace Beauty had a deluge of customers clamoring to buy its prism rainbow highlighter after a Reddit user saw a meme of the product. Much like Kylie Jenner's cosmetics lines, prism sold out fast and their rest stock sold out fast too. People even paid over $1,000 for a pan on eBay. To put that into perspective, it's originally retailed for $22. Its creator Jenna Georgescu revealed in an interview with Racked just how time time-consuming it is to make this rainbow pen compared to a more standard highlighter shade. In 12 hours, her team can usually make 500 to 1,000 pans of their other colors, but they can only make 100 pans of prism in the same amount of time. It's layering all of those stripes that takes the extra time. The fact that it's homemade literally in Jenna's home proves that you don't need fancy factory equipment to make cosmetics that are commercially and incredibly successful. So it's no surprise that many disappointed makeup fans who didn't get their hands on one of the in-demand prism pans hands took matters into their own hands and went the DIY route. DIY Highlighter 
Thanks to the popularity of Prism, clever DIY beauty enthusiasts figured out how to make their own homemade versions of the rainbow highlighter, and they shared their methods with the rest of the world via the internet. Reddit user the Kitten Butcher crushed various eyeshadows and put them together using a classic pressed powder saving technique, which involves adding rubbing alcohol to the powder and then pressing with a paper towel. She used an array of eyeshadow colors plus a highlighter to make a rainbow effect, but her method shows you how to remix and illuminating powers to create your own customized highlighter. First off, remove your chosen eyeshadow colors from their palette with a knife, scrape them separately into the sections of a muffin tray, and crush them as finely as possible. Then, crush a highlighter and mix it into each of the colors. Next, add rubbing alcohol one drop at a time until you form a paste. Lay down stripes of the colors into an empty cosmetics palette with a toothpick. Press down with a paper towel until the color stops transferring and finally allow it to dry, which takes around 24 hours. As for application, Prism creator Jenna has some top tips. Rather than a brush, use your fingers to swish the rainbow shades across your face. To blend the colors together to create a silver shimmer, move your fingers back and forth in the same direction, avoiding circular motions. What do you think of rainbow highlighters? Check out our friends at The Things who make interesting, feel-good videos about lifestyle, pop culture, and everything viral that is sure to keep you entertained. Which is your favorite item of makeup and would you ever try making your own DIY version? Let us know in the comments and give our video a big thumbs up. Thanks for watching.